It's our favorite time, earnings is happening. This past week we had some big earnings and I'm gonna cover four companies that reported earnings that I hold in my portfolio. That's gonna be 3M, Microsoft, AT&T, and Union Pacific. Now, let's look at my portfolio performance. This is my promise to you to be transparent, so if you like that type of transparency, be sure to subscribe. But right now, I am up 16%. At the end of 2022, I was down in the red 6%, so massive gains. It's been a really good year for most investors. Um, let's quickly touch base on the companies that I am going to talk about. 3M, right now my portfolio is down 22%. Microsoft has been an excellent performer. It's up 42%. AT&T has been a dud. Uh, it's down 34%, but there were some positives with their earnings we'll cover. And Union Pacific, I think, was a great decision. Um, it's newer than Microsoft, and it's up uh, a little over 19%. So let's get into it. 3M. Now, they beat their earnings per share by 23.34%, and their revenue, they beat it by 5.58%. So it was a double beat, which is good. Now, I'm not going to go into the specifics of comparing them to analysts, because what you want to look at are the financials. So let's start with the income statement. We'll see net sales have actually declined in both the three months ended on June 30th and the six months ended on June 30th when comparing the two years. I do not like that. We'll see the net income went from an income to a loss in both situations, so not a good thing, right? So let's move on to the balance sheet. Maybe it got better. We'll see here that cash actually did improve, the cash and cash equivalents, and they did have an increase in their total assets. Now with the liability side of things, their short term went up, which I don't like, and their accounts payable slightly ticked up. But with their long term debt, it did go down, which is great, but unfortunately their other liabilities went up pretty much by double, and that made their total liabilities go up significantly compared to what their assets went up. So when you look at it in this light, I do not like that. Now their adjusted free cash flow is 1.5 billion, but that's versus 13 billion in that long-term debt. So I just don't like that ratio. Again, this is a dividend stock that a lot of people invest in for that dividend of 5.4%. They have a 62% payout ratio and slow growth over the last year, only 0.67% and about 2% over the five years uh, of an average. I think the dividend is safe, but it's providing us low growth against a struggling stock performance, which means you're probably losing money when you factor in that dividend, and I just don't think this stock is worth it. So in summary, I am not impressed with 3M. They have operating margins that are improving, they have some cash uh, growth, and they beat expectations, but they have too much debt, they have a larger increase in their liabilities than their assets, they are now having net losses, they have uh, high expenses, and they have litigation that was mentioned all throughout their earnings, which means it's not gonna give me confidence as an investor. So hopefully the areas of improvement will help me exit the stock someday in the green, but it's gonna be a tough one if it gets there. It might take some time, and in that time frame, I might sell just depending on what this company produces over the next couple years. So in my book, it's not a buy. Now let's move to Microsoft. They beat on both earnings and revenue. Their earnings per share was a 5.53% beat and their revenue was a 1.26% beat. If we look at their income statement, their revenue over the three months ended on December 31st and the six months ended on 30, December 31st when you're comparing the two years did go up in both situations. That is what I like to see is growing revenue. Now the cost of revenue, the expenses side of things did go up in both situations, but that's to be expected in this economy where inflation has taken over. Overall, net income did decline. Um, so that's something that I think is not a negative for me because Microsoft has so much strong other aspects going for it that I think that net income uh, decrease will turn around to an increase pretty quickly. If we look at their balance sheet, we'll see that the cash and cash equivalents did go up. And if we look at their liabilities, their long-term debt went down. That is awesome. I love to see that. And a big decrease in total liabilities, which is a big win for me. Now, when we look across their product categories with revenue uh, and operating income, everything went up except for that personal computing section, which they are struggling with and have been for a while. So not, no surprises here. So there are some important notes with Microsoft I want to mention. 
They want to integrate AI into all their products, and this means huge future potential benefits from revenue to growth for them. Now, the revenue from AI is expected to be generated later than analysts expected, which caused a brief sell-off in Microsoft and might cause some more sell-offs uh, in the near future. But this is because they estimate that it'll cost them an extra $30 per user to integrate AI into all their products and they're gonna have to figure out a way to integrate that and have businesses buy into that. And I think they will eventually because businesses are so dependent on, their, on Microsoft's products, I think it will be adopted widely eventually and that will just create more of that nice, sticky, dependable subscription service revenue which is gonna be a gold mine for Microsoft. Now, cloud growth is still growing, um, but it's, there's just a slowdown in that growth. So this quarter, they reported 27% growth versus the last, last quarter where they had 31% growth, and their forecast is that this will continue to decline in the growth. But I have zero worries here. 27% growth in the quarter is still amazing, and with a company this big, with their cloud already having amazing growth and being as big as it is, you can expect the growth to just continuously increase. There's gonna be some slowdown um, in that growth quarter to quarter, but it's still growing. 27% is awesome. Now Nadella was quoted in saying that AI workloads in the cloud, this is where Microsoft is in the lead. So AI is the future. Microsoft, I think, is gonna be a company that really delivers here, which is gonna be something that will benefit us investors massively. So in summary, Microsoft still dominates in so many areas, has the potential for huge future gaming revenue with the potential Activision Blizzard purchase, which is looking more positive as the weeks go by, and they have the AI future potential revenue growth, which should be very strong for them, as well as the cloud revenue growth. So all this is just, and then you have, of course, their office products, which are just sticky and I think will continue to grow. Uh, all this is equal to Microsoft being a quality stock with solid future growth. It's still a growth stock in my opinion. And I think if this stock gets below $300 per share again at some point, it's definitely a buy. So let's move to AT&T. Now they beat on their earnings per share by 4.65% and they missed very slightly on their revenue. It's basically a me at 0.10%. Now with AT&T, some quick highlights with their 5G side of things, they had 464,000 new customer ads and on their fiber side of things, they had 251,000 new ads, which is great. If we move into the financials, AT&T actually had some positives here. We look at their operating revenue, it did grow uh, slightly when you compare the second quarter versus the six month period ending between the years, which is great and their total operating expenses is declining in both situations. So those are double positive moves as well. That created the net income to be uh, positive with the second quarter, but the six month comparing years did go down slightly. So I think overall this is strong. Now their balance sheet, their cash did go up. This is great. And their total assets went up from a 402 billion to 408 billion. And when you factor in the liability side of things, the one thing I didn't like is their short-term debt did jump almost by double, but their accounts payable did go down pretty significantly. Now the long-term debt, this is where this company, I think it's so important that they pay this down. When they spun off the Warner Bros uh, business, part of their business, they promised they're gonna focus down on paying their long-term debt. Now it did go down slightly, but what I've been seeing with AT&T is they've been kind of struggling with this long-term debt. I think it went up uh, uh, one of the recent quarters but it's been kind of a slow, slower than expected pay down of their long-term debt. So it went down slightly here, so I'll give that a thumbs up, but not a clap because I think it could have been a lot better. And overall, their liabilities did go down. So you had assets increasing, liabilities going down. That is a win-win. And overall, I think AT&T is moving in the right direction. So again, per my recent video, if you haven't watched it, be sure to watch that regarding the lead cables and the liability that's gonna put on AT&T, I think they can easily cover the financial aspect of the cleanup of those lead cables, but it's the unknown regarding the legal liability side of it, and that worries me. So for that reason, I just don't think AT&T is a buy. I don't wanna buy into something until we know more about the legal side of those lead cables. Um, also, they have high debt still that they will probably never get rid of just because they have 
high expenditures uh, just in the type of business they're in. They have the lead cable issue now and just it's a slow growing business in general. So I think they're moving in the right direction, but still not a buy for me. There's still more I want to see from this company. Lastly, Union Pacific. Now they missed on both earnings and revenue. They missed 6.67% on their earnings per share and they missed 2.57% on their revenue. But there's gonna be a surprise here that I want to share with you. Let's first look at their financials. Union Pacific's income statement, their operating revenues did go down slightly from the second quarter in the year to date when comparing years. And the operating expenses though did tick down slightly when you uh, look at the second quarter, but they went up a little bit when you're comparing the year to date. So net income wise decreases, but nothing here is raising an alarm or a red flag because this company, you know, they're dealing with a tough economy with increased inflation. So I think this company is just going through a slowdown at the moment. If we look at their balance sheet, well, we do see the cash went down slightly. The total assets did go up a little bit and the short term debt did go up slightly, but their long term debt went down slightly. So kind of a wash. I do put more emphasis on the long term debt, though, so I like to see that more and total liabilities went down. So you have assets going up, liabilities going down. So that's good. So their balance sheet to me looks better than their income statement. But the big news is the stock jumped 10 percent recently upon an announcement of a CEO change. Now, Union Pacific names veteran rail executive as new CEO, and his name is Jim Venna, and he'll be uh, CEO effective on August 14th, 2023. And he succeeds the, pro this, the current CEO, who will not be CEO after August 14th, uh, Lance Fritz. Now, I put a big heart around his picture because investors, and I believe employees, love this move. And that's why you saw that 10% jump. Now, Lance Fritz, the current CEO, is not liked by employees and investors. There's been a lot of issues, right, with possible strikes and just very unhappy employees. I know one myself who works for the railroad industry, and it's just not a great career or job right now, but maybe that will improve in the future. Maybe. Now, Lance Fritz, the current CEO, has led Union Pacific during a time of underperformance compared to other Class 1 railroads, so that has not been good. So Jim Vanna, the new one that will be taking over, has a proven record of strong financial and operating performance over his 40 years of experience in the industry. Jim Vanna appears to be a welcome change by employees and investors. It's now estimated that Union Pacific stock could double over the next couple of years if he can deliver like he has in the past. So I remain bullish on this monopolistic company that consumers, the economy, depend on. I'm glad I made a large initial investment and over the next couple months with any decent dips, I will be adding more as I see this company as a steady, strong performer, especially now under new leadership. I'd say any price below 210 and especially $200 per share would be a buy. And here you have it, my review on these four stocks. Of course, Microsoft, Union Pacific, I think are great investments. They both have performed well for me. AT&T is showing some improvement but I still don't recommend in 3M. I just don't like that company at all. I want out as well as AT&T, but more so 3M. Uh, so let me know your thoughts. And if you have any differing viewpoints that would be helpful to us all, that would be much appreciated to share. And thank you for watching and we'll see you soon on Mark Arnold's Finance.